Check. Should I dye my hair blonde? Should I bleach my hair? Oh, yeah, come on in. Hey, man. Hey, muchacho. Um, you know last um last Wednesday, uh, went to cinema, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you remember? Yeah, I I, film. I um I lent you a fiver. Um, I was just wondering, can have you got that? Can I can I get it? I don't remember, I don't know what you're talking about, I didn't lend you. I lend you a fine! Wait, wait, shut up. Lent. What's it all about? I'm here to tell you. generally eating a lot and generally feeling quite sick but that's why I'm here because I've recently learned that that isn't what Lent's about you know Lent's about more than that Lent's about so much more than that See, what Lent is really about, it isn't about pancakes, it isn't about feeling sick. What Lent is really about is it's about survival. It's about four zero days and four zero nights that Jesus spent out in the desert. If you don't know the story, come with me. We're going on a journey into the Bible. Now, in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 4, it chronicles the early start of Jesus' ministry. And basically, after he gets baptised in the River Jordan, he decides, for some reason, I'm going to go out into the desert. I'm just going to hang out for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, somebody joins him in the desert. Matt, do you know who he is? The devil. Now, the devil turns up and the devil's like, you're the son of God, you shouldn't be hungry. Why are you doing this? You're an idiot. You know, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he's saying. He's saying, like, you know, you can do miracles, you can do loads of crazy stuff. Turn this stone into bread and eat up. You know, don't be hungry. And Jesus is like, man doesn't live on bread alone, but on the word of God. And the devil's like, oh, rubbish, and storms off. And then he comes back two more times and, you know, Jesus again gets rid of him. And he gets rid of him because he knows the scriptures. He gets rid of him because of the word. Okay, now Jesus overcomes these temptations, like I said, with the word of God. Jesus knows his stuff, he's been studying, you know, and he knows what to say to tell the devil to flip off, basically. And that, you know, is kind of the way that our world works. You know, in, in my opinion, that, that passage to me is like, the devil is the world, okay? It's the world versus the word, baby. <laughs> ah! 
Now this whole world versus word thing comes up loads in the Bible and you know I think it really can help us when like dealing with what to do in our day-to-day -day lives. Now there's um, this story in Acts where Paul basically ends up in Athens, right? And he ends up in Athens and he's walking around and he, you know, does the touristy thing and he's just like looking around, seeing what the city's like and he sees that this whole place is covered with, covered with idols. You know, there's like idols here and idols over there, and like idols everywhere, basically. And um, uh, Paul's like, whoa, what's, you know, what's this about? This is getting me angry. This is getting me, you know, these guys need to know about Jesus. They need to know about God, and, you know, the true God sort of thing. So he goes to this place in, um, in Athens called Mars Hill, basically. And on Mars Hill, it's where all the, all the preachers would go and all, all these people would come. It's kind of like that place in Hyde Park. What's it called? Do you know what it's called? Speaker's Corner or something. And he goes up there and, he's, and he starts talking. And basically what Paul does is he, he delivers a message based on what these guys know. You know, he's like, you guys, you know, oh, I've come to your city. Many idols you have. Not like that. But he's, he's like, oh, you guys have all these idols. There's e I've even seen one that says to an unknown God. Well, let me tell you about this unknown God. And he uses their culture to talk about Jesus and ends up giving this wicked message. <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> now what Paul is doing here, like I said, he's using imagery that these guys know to teach them about Jesus. And he's so confident in his faith that he can do that. He can spot what these guys are into and he can, and he can use it for the glory of God. You know, and this world is so out to make us conform to it. You know, you see these billboards, buy this, look like this, oh, be skinny, you know? And it's so hard not to join in on that. But there's this passage in Romans 12, verse two, and it says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be renewed by the transforming of your mind. And what the writer of Romans is saying there is, you know, arm yourself with scripture, arm yourself with knowledge and faith, like Paul, so you can go out into the world and bring Jesus to them. And that's basically like what I think, you know, kind of Lent is all about. All right, so that is what, you know, Lent's all about, I think. That's the real message of Lent. You know, it's not about pancakes, even though it is, you know, everybody loves pancakes. The real message of Lent is about surviving what this world throws at you. You know, it's about arming yourself with scripture and arming yourself with knowledge so that your faith can just be so strong that, you know, whatever the world throws at you, you can survive it. So guys, next time you eat a pancake, think about Matthew 7. Jesus basically says, someone who listens to my word and doesn't put it into practice it's like a foolish man who built his house on sand. When the rain comes, he gets washed away. Therefore, be like the guy who builds his house on rock, aka the word. And when the rains come, you'll have a steady foundation. So happy Lent. Good eating. Ha ha ha!